On Friday morning, the Fern Hollow Bridge in Pittsburgh collapsed, injuring 10 people. The collapse came just hours before President Biden was scheduled to speak in Pittsburgh about the need to repair the country's infrastructure. Inspection data shows that this bridge was consistently rated in poor condition since 2011 and continually declined in subsequent years. Unsafe bridges like the Fern Hollow Bridge are all too common in the United States. According to a report by the American Road and Transportation Builders Association, 45,000 bridges in the U.S. are structurally deficient, almost 80,000 need replacement, and the report card for America's infrastructure says that 231,000 bridges need some kind of repair or preservation work. During his speech in Pittsburgh, Biden touted his $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, which allocated $110 billion to fixing bridges and roads. So the problem is getting fixed, right? Not exactly. While there's no doubt that allocating more money to infrastructure is a good thing, the amount allocated doesn't meet the scale of the problem. The White House's own fact sheet says that the $110 billion would be enough to repair 10,000 small bridges. So I guess the people that use the 70,000 bridges that won't get repaired will either have to find a detour or risk dying on their commute. A mind-boggling 178 million trips are taken across structurally deficient bridges each day. While this is already bad as is, consider the fact that this bridge collapsed during Biden's massive war push against Russia. On Monday, Ukraine received a $200 million shipment of U.S. weapons to point at Russia. Then on Thursday, just one day before the collapse of Fern Hollow Bridge, Biden called the Ukrainian president to fearmonger about an imminent Russian invasion of Ukraine. One has to question how sincere Biden is about wanting to fix America's infrastructure when he chooses to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to arm Ukraine when bridges in America are collapsing. Just a few months ago, Biden approved the largest military budget in U.S. history. This didn't happen because the American people were clamoring for a larger inventory of missiles. It happened precisely because our political priorities are not decided by the American working class, but by the military-industrial complex, which profits off of the endless war foreign policy of the two major parties. If we actually want to have a serious conversation about rebuilding America's infrastructure, it has to start with a conversation around defunding the Pentagon.